And welcome to Upstart Semi-Finals Preview. I'm Joshua Jeans. I'm joined here by Damien Ratcliffe and Paul Baston. Boys, how are you going? Good, Josh. Good, Good to right. hear. Uh, just quickly, on a sad note, we give our deepest condolences to the McCarthy family and, uh, of course, the teammates of, of John and uh, hope that they all get a speedy recovery. Uh, but let's get to the first Friday night game and it's Adelaide versus Fremantle at Amy C. Um, Talking points for this one, Damien. Uh, Tali was out. Um, so who goes to who goes to Pavlich? Tali is a huge loss, broken arm. Um, we mentioned him last week in our previews up to the game, and he did a pretty good job on Sam Reid until he broke his arm. But uh, Ben Rutten, the experienced uh, key defender for the Crows, has to go to Pavlich now. Pavlich was awesome against the Cats, Paul, uh, and they really need to stop him. Yeah, Pavlich, oh, Pavlich was the key, wasn't he? Six goals, and at crucial times too. There were times where... The Cats had finally found a foothold in the match and Pavlich would just step up and kick that goal just to get that gap again. He's phenomenal, yeah. Pavlich. And I think, uh, yeah, the big truck will go to him. And um, he, he runs a very, very accomplished defender, so it'd be a great matchup. Someone said to me earlier in the week that uh, if, like, Pavlich is... If he was in Melbourne, he'd be bigger than Buddy Franklin. I don't know if I agree with that so much, but he would definitely be a bigger player. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting point. I mean, I think he does get the credit he deserves to an extent. But, of course, if he's playing in Melbourne under the spotlight, Friday night games and stuff like that, I think you'd be hearing a lot more about Matthew Pavlich. And he's been superb. I mean, he's been All-Australian across all three lines. I mean, that's yeah. as good as any player we've seen in the last 10 years. OK, well, that's fair enough. Um, now, Damo, when they played uh, when they played Geelong, the midfield was able to stop the supply to Hawkins. They uh, were. So can you see them, can they do that and stop it to Tippett and, and Walker? Well, what we talked about last week was who was going to stop Hawkins. And it wasn't really... Dawson that stopped Hawkins. It was more that their, their midfield, Frio's midfield. Ross Lyon, his game plan is superb. Michael Johnson played loose man in defence, and they sort of, they, it's not so much flooding, but they sort of play their game in their defensive half. Uh, they're going to need to do that again, especially with Walker and Tippett now. Um, it's not going to be the defenders they rely on, it's going to be the midfield that, that needs to stop the supply. Oh, 100% agree. Yeah, it was the intercept marks. That was the thing. In the first quarter, they would have had numerous, I'm not sure the exact number, but numerous intercept marks, and it just cut off any possible danger that Geelong could have posed yeah. them with the big forwards. Well, so it's just going on the defence, Paul. Who do you think, take, who, who goes to who? Does Dawson line up on Tippett, or or does he line up on Walker? Because he's um, their, obviously, main defender now that... I think Dawson, Dawson generally takes the biggest, stronger sort of players, which is ironic, because when you look at him, you wouldn't think he'd be able to do it, but he does, and uh, yeah, so I think he'll go to Tippett. Um, yeah, and Silvani to Walker. Sil Silvani has to go to Walker in that yeah. case. Yeah, I think, but they can mix and match. I mean, they're pretty flexible down there. I think so. It'll be interesting. Now, Jared Healy, he, he's a big fan of Kepler Bradley, and he reckons the Kepler Bradley is the the X factor for Freo. Damo, how important is he? I think he's very important. He plays as that uh, second key forward. Sort of Pavlich plays a lot deeper up forward, and Bradley's more of that lead up from the centre half forward, and he also uh, takes the takes the ruck work uh, when Sanderlands isn't in there. Um, he's he's massive, I think. He Him and Tippett, they both play similar roles for each team and they're going to be the two to watch, I think. Yeah, well, we saw in 2010, Lee Brown for Collingwood was the very, he was sort of the prototype of this player. Um, so, yeah, it's a very, very important role to play and he does it quite well. Uh, he's a good kick for goal. And um, Sanderlands can take most of the ruck, we know that, because yeah. he's a dominant force in the ruck. And he's getting good now, Sanderlands, so... Well, Sandilands didn't play the last two, uh, last time these two teams met, and that was only in early August. The Crows won by 28 points at Amy, but uh, Sandilands is back. Fife didn't play that day. He's back, and Pavlich is informed that he wasn't in back then, so it's going to be a much closer game than the last two last time the two teams met. And for me, Ballantyne, I, I really like Ballantyne. I mean, people hate him because he's you know, a pest, but... I think he's a great player. I love him. that aside. He's he's got great run. He's got he pops up with a goal. He's got I, great. He's got the sort of talent that I think gets overshadowed. The, the things he does off the ball overshadows his talent. Is what I'm yeah. trying to say. I think um, he's a beautiful kick for goal, and his tackling pressure is very very important down there for them. So yeah, he's he's a very important player. For me, Adelaide's biggest play is uh, Dangerfield in this one. I think he he wasn't really. I didn't think he did too much against Sydney. I, in my opinion, he's. Well, he's, he's, he's got another level to go to anyway, that's the thing. He, he tried hard, there's no doubt about that, but he'll really need to lift Need to lift if Adelaide are to get up in this game. I thought the Crows in general were disappointing last week. All around, they were probably my disappointment for the round. I thought they were going to win, um, and they didn't, obviously. Uh, 
They're going to need something from Dangerfield. They're going to need something from Scott Thompson, Sloan. Matty Wright got 37 touches the last two last time these two met uh, teams met. If those sort of guys that, you know, the mid-range players, the Matty Wrights, if they can have an impact on the game, Adelaide should win. But uh, the form Frio's in at the moment uh, can't go against Ross Lyon either. He's experienced in the coach's box um, come September. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, I think um, this Frio side is very reminiscent of the St Kilda side that Ross Lyon took over to. They've got that great top end. And then I think the structure sort of cover that, you know, that bottom yeah. six players that just play their role. So yeah. I think, um, yeah, they'll be, they'll be quite dangerous well, this week. It's clear that you two have a bit of a crush on Ross Lyon <laughs> and his uh, defensive plan. There's no doubt about that. Damo, who are you going for, mate? I'm tipping the Dockers got the purple on today. And uh, I'm hoping <laughs> the Purple Haze can get through, knock out Adelaide in straight sets and meet Hawthorne in the prelim. I think it'll be a typical Ross Lyon Dow sort of affair, but I think Adelaide will get up. Um, in the last 12 years or so, I think two sides from the Elimination Final have gone on to win the semi, so I think uh, Adelaide should get up. And I hate Fremantle, so it's Adelaide for me. Now, the second semi-final will be played on the Saturday night at the MCG. Paul, I've already got my ticket. I'm sure you both, both of you would have your tickets, wouldn't you? Yeah, on Col- my way. Yeah, definitely. To where you'll be sitting with uh, God knows who. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, so big talking points to this one. Obviously, uh, Quinton Lynch got off last night. Uh, Maxwell didn't choose to uh, get the decision overturned. I- I'm a bit upset for that Maxwell. I'm, I mean, obviously, big West Coast supporter, so I'm happy that he's not playing. But really... Poor boy is a midget, and he shouldn't have been rubbed out, Damo. No, Maxwell should have been rubbed out, should I reckon. Have? Yeah, you hit someone high, you get weak. So I thought he was going to get three, um, and he did. Yeah, incidentally, he got three, but uh, reduced to two with guilty plea. Um, he's the leadership's more of a loss rather than the skill or or the type of play that he plays on. That leadership's the loss, I think. Oh, 100%. He, he marshals that defence. He makes other players better players. I think that's the main thing about Nick Maxwell is that, like you said, he's not renowned for his skill or um, anything definitely like that. It's, it's, it's definitely his leadership. And so, yeah, it's going to be hard to well, cover that. Do you think that Quinton Lynch should have been rubbed out? Uh, no. I don't think he... He was contesting the ball. Um, you know, I don't know, I don't like the line that he has slower reflexes than a five foot ten bloke. But like, it works, so, you know... <laughs> Um, it's on precedence too. Earlier in the year, Daniel Merritt got off for a very similar incident. Okay. I think that's where they they probably so they've been the con- they've been consistent this year. Then the MRP. That's another matter. So I we'll, think we'll leave that. That's, otherwise that's we'll be another going matter for another <laughs> we'll be day. Going on for too long. Um, all right. Well, then let's start with that. Then Maxwell is out. So how does the uh, defensive Collingwood match up? Because West Coast have got to, they're probably going with the same forward line they went in against. Um, who do we play in North Melbourne? They weren't very good. That's why I don't remember. Um, <laughs> Who, who matches up on who? Because you've got Darling Kennedy, both kicked four goals last week. Quinton Lynch popped up with one, or he was playing well anyway. And uh, and then you'll get Nadanui and Cox going down to the four line. Doltak comes back in for Maxwell, um, and that's a massive in for us, I think, um, for Collingwood, because uh, Goldsack's that type of player. He's that utility player. He kicked the first goal in the, uh, the replay grand final against the Saints. He can play forward, can play back, um, can play as a winger. He's, he's really uh, versatile and he's a good in for us, I think. It'll be interesting because he's played predominantly forward this year. He's been that sort of defensive forward. And he's kicked um, 25, 26 goals, I think, roughly around that. So, yeah, if we do put him back, it'll be um, almost foreign territory for, for him this year because, yeah, he's been up forward all year. And so you obviously drop Heath Shaw back then as well, but he'll have to play more of a defensive role that, rather than an attacking role off half-back, surely. Yeah, you'd think so. Um, you know, Tuvi went to Darling last time. Ben Reid went to Kennedy. Um, Nathan Brown went to, to Cox and Tarrant went to, uh, to uh, Hill. Uh, I think Tarrant won't play on Josh Hill this time. I think uh, Tarrant, he's in, there's a new role for Tarrant and Tarrant will be that, uh, go more towards a tall, I think. I thought he looked good against Buddy Franklin. I was really impressed with maybe get, roughing him up and try, giving it a go at least because there's no real way to stop Buddy Franklin and at least he gave it some attempt, Paul. Oh, 100% with both. I think, um, I think he'll go to Kennedy, Tarrant. Yeah, so um, and I think probably Tuvi might go to um, to Josh Hill. Yeah, I think that's the way. Um, and Brand will still stick with the rest in Ruckman. See, I, I think that's thought, how they'll go. I thought maybe a Heath Shaw and Josh Hill to make him, uh, Josh a bit more accountable. Maybe um, running up the ground. I don't know, taking him out of the forward line. Well, is is Josh Hill West Coast's um, most dangerous small forward? Do you think? Well, there's no other. Who, who else would be the small forward? I think Tuvi's Tuvi's. Um, the tightest small backman that Collingwood has. Definitely. Um, Tuvi will take that, that gig, I think. Um, we'll rely on Heath Shaw to be 
more of that attacking runner. He might even go uh, go up forward and play as a uh, defensive defensive forward. And we're also forgetting Harry O'Brien too. Oh, Harry, Harry can also play a role. In, in this case. Oh, okay, Harry O'Brien can play a role, guys. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> now we'll stay on defence. As Bo Waters is out, which is, uh, he's my favourite player. He's, I've got his number on my jumper. I thought it was Nick Matt. Oh, well, he changes every week, <laughs> doesn't it, don't we? Um, no, I think Bo Waters is a big loss. Does uh, Matty Rosa come back in? Well, it's, he, that, he's going through the training session today. Uh, Wusha said that, that if he got through today, he would be up for selection. That would be a big inclusion because you obviously lose Bo Waters. I think keep Jacob Brennan in. I think he's done enough to earn his spot this year. Um, or maybe Mitch Brown's come in and replaced when Eric McKenzie and Darren Glass have been out. So he's done another good job. Um, but Bo Waters, as a spiritual leader, and just a, as a, he's just a genuine gun and... He'll be a big loss for the Eagles, Damo. Yeah, well, we look at the punters, and the punters are going with West Coast. Um, Colling was favourite at the moment, but West Coast continues to get back in, uh, backed in. The last time these two teams met, West Coast smashed Collingwood at Subiaco. Uh, they also met in June at the MCG, and Pies got up by three points. That was a cracker game. Uh, but I don't think the Pies can take much away from the last time they met at Subi. They didn't play Jolly that day. They played Cam Wood, um, you know. Cloak and Dawes didn't kick a goal between them that day, and Cloak's in excellent form, Paul. Yeah, there's two very big differences. As you said, Jolly and Cloak, they're two completely different prospects from three weeks ago. Cloak's kicked 11 goals in the last two weeks, and, um, and Jolly is... Jolly, I don't know how he does it, but he finds a way to negate Nick Natanui in the ruck, and it's a lot about that stepping across the line that, uh, mm. that West Coast actually complains to the AFL about. Well, I think uh, you see with Jolly, and when he plays against uh, ruckmen like Mumford as well, uh, he jumps really early at the player. I think it's not a very good tactic, but if, it, if you get away with it, why not do it? Because Nick knew no, no, he would just jump over you. I think we saw that on the weekend. Goldstein was way out of his depth and he had no chance. Uh, y yes, he's a big inclusion, but you know they lost the clearances 20 by 24. Now... And with an elite midfield such as Collingwood, surely they'd be, they're the ones that have to lift here because they, you can't just put all that sole blame on Cameron Wood uh, with a differential of 24. The problem is Collingwood's midfield at the moment. And, you know, you go through the names and it's really a star-studded midfield. Swan, Pendlebury, Beam, Sidebottom, Thomas, you know, Wellingham. These guys, they've got to lift their game, seriously, because Jolly dominated the ruck against Hawthorne and Hawthorne dominated the clearances. Yeah, well... Penelry, I thought Penelry was pretty good the other night. But as you said, um, Dal Thomas had 17 touches and didn't have the impact that we're used to seeing. Um, even side bottoms tailed off a little bit towards the end of the year. And Swanee gets his usual 30, but he hasn't been as damaging in recent weeks. So, yeah, if, it's all about how they use the ball, I think. We're getting this, Collingwood's still getting enough of the ball in the midfield, but it just hasn't been quite as damaging. Yeah, and no, I, uh, I think that uh, Scott Sell was really taking his game to another level, and I think we're starting to see he's, he's a lot more like Joel than he is uh, Adam. I think he, he gets a lot of the ball, he's got some good run, great, he's got a great tank, he runs all day, and, but he also plays that defensive role, so he'll sit on his player, negate him, and then get the ball as well, which makes him so much more damaging. He went to Beams last time. Uh, Beams was obviously in awesome form uh, during that sort of period, that August uh, period. Does he go to Beams again? Does he go to Pendlebury? I'm not too sure. You probably got to... I think he'd go to Beams. I, I'm not, I haven't been a big fan. I'm a big fan of Pendlebury in general, but this year I haven't, I haven't been that much of a fan of, of, of Pendlebury. So I think that Beams has been the one to, to stop for me. Swan hasn't looked that good since he came back from that suspension, I don't think. Uh, he's a great player, and the, the thing is he could turn on at any, any point. So that's the thing you've got to be worried about with Collingwood. Uh, how do we go over the MCG, West Coast? I'm not too sure. That's the big question, isn't it? And the other, the other name I want to throw out there is Collingwood's X-Factor, Andrew Cracker. He was brilliant last week, four goals. Uh, he obviously didn't play the last, two to uh, last time these two teams met. He's only played the last few weeks, but he's been brilliant for, uh, for the Pies. Well, as, uh, as Matthew Richardson said, he's an, he's an MCG specialist, Josh. <laughs> Richo, the, Richo the loves Cracker, though. Yeah, he loves him, <laughs> and we do too. Yeah, but, because um, they're ex-teammates. But uh, yeah, that's true. But um, <laughs> no, but crack, we've met, that's what Colling was like this year. Really, is that um, that cramming small four that can kick a goal from anywhere, and uh, Cracker more than played his role against Hawthorne. So if he can do that again, I think uh, it's going to be really important for Colling. Now, what was so impressive that West Coast on the weekend I found was the run that they were getting from Andrew Embley, uh, Gaff. Uh, they were phenomenal on the wings there, weren't they? And Maston as well. Maston is really taking his game to another level this year. Like we said, it's Collingwood's game to lose here and the midfielders really have to play a lot more defensive. They try and play too attacking. They let Sewell off the leash. They let Mitchell off the leash last week. They can't afford to do that against 
West Coast midfield. Well, in that um, in that game that Collingwood won earlier in the year, it was I think Paul Roos described it as a bit of Russian roulette. I think both sides were sort of um, giving each other space at the clearances, and it just so happened that Collingwood used the ball a little bit better and got got away with the win. But yeah, as you say, Emily was dominant on the weekend, and we, Collingwood really needs to watch out um, going West Coast way. We had you know a defensive sweeper. That's I think that's that's the the bottom line here. They need a defensive sweeper at the clearances. Well, we shouldn't expect too much from. Um will take anything out of the North Melbourne game, though. I thought that was... It wasn't uh, highly contested. I think West Coast were over that game in the first... The game was over in the first 20 minutes. But uh, this will this one will be really tough. I, I expect it to be more like the first half of Collingwood Hawthorne than the, the West Coast game, wouldn't you agree? Sports bet have an offer at the moment. If you pick <laughs> back a team to win uh, under 12 points, if they lose by under 12 points, you get your money back. Back who you think is going to win against Collingwood West Coast because this game is going to be under 12 points. Yeah, I, I, it'll be tight. I so, so who are you going, Damo? I'm going to go <laughs> the Pies at home. Yeah, the Pies for me. <laughs> Typical. Uh, <laughs> West Coast for me. <laughs> and, Typical. Uh, well, I've got good reason to do this one. I think we've definitely got Nick now. We didn't even talk about Nick now. How are you going to stop him? He ran through you guys last time they played. Yeah, doors, doors will stop Nick now. <laughs> there you go. You heard it here. All right, guys, that's it for this week. And... Uh, See you next time. <laughs>